So Ross, uh, we're going to go through the gear. Let's start with Finn. So just uh, maybe let me know the sizes you have on the board sizes you've got. Uh, so I work with uh, Airpod fins, so uh, I find that the fins that the fin sizes that are working with my board. So I start with the 71 Manta, which is the larger board. Um, I usually ride a 38 with my 79, and then with a 7, then I might go to a 37 if it's really windy, but I can't change down to a smaller size. So, and then it's 37 with the 71 for sure, uh, and then with my smaller board, the 60. The 61, I'm riding 33, possibly 34 if I feel like I really need to put the, it's light wind but gusty and I, I can't really handle the medium board. So, and then like with the smaller size sails, like a 6.4 and down, then I put in a 32, possibly a 31, but it's really rare. It has to be really just out of control. And I've, I've sort of heard that basically depending on your board conditions style etc that you have a different rake of fin explain maybe what your reasonings are why you do that yeah well here in Fuerteventura like our courses tend to be a bit broader so so um, so you, it's about finding a balance of, of release in the board as well as being able to still point a little bit because the further you rake back the fin the more free it can feel but in, as well at the same time the you lose a little bit of your your ability to uh, to point the board, so it's about finding the balance. And you know, with these boards this year, I feel like I, they got a little bit natural more power. So I'm actually raking the uh, the the fins back a little bit more than I have done in previous years when the boards were less powerful. So I needed more power from the fin. Very interesting. Um, foot straps. Do you stance? You know, do you have them? Wide, narrow, different boards. What's uh, the? So in general, like uh, I guess when I'm searching for power in the lighter air, I put a narrower stance. Uh, uh, mainly, I play around with the front strap. Uh, I usually find a sweet, sweet spot for the back strap, which I like, no matter what wind conditions. And then I just either lengthen my, uh, lengthen my stance if I'm looking for control, or shorten it up if I'm looking for a bit more power. And uh, foot in the straps, let's have a look. I'd like to get your feet in the straps and also, um, you know, position of them on the board. Okay. Um, foot, you know, how far out do you have them, etc. Well, yeah, I like to have quite a tight strap. So, you know, like I guess my, my uh, I don't want to put too much of my foot in there because then it comes a bit of a struggle to, uh, to pull it out again. Uh, I might have slightly bigger ones in the front so that I can put my foot in and then like, turn it up and kind of hold it in lever leverage it in there a little bit and then you know but uh yeah in general yeah pretty tight straps and the same uh, on all the boards like that yeah i mean uh, in other years i've i've had larger larger um, back straps in my small board just when i wanted to be further up and over the over the board this year i feel like uh i'm kind of locked out on the rail a bit more so i'm i've been having to adjust what how i sell my my gear um, yeah, so it's, you know, like you got to get your gear and then tune it the best how that gear is going to perform. So like, uh, you know, my my uh, my style of sailing maybe is, is a little bit different this year than it has been in previous years here. So I've had to adjust to the way the equipment is changed and uh, try to make the best out of that. And I guess that then affects the base position as well and uh, um, yeah, or is that more actually, conditioned? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the base position can change as well. Uh, I definitely think that these boards seem to have a, have more of a one, uh, a, like a sweet spot. And I'm generally not uh, messing around with it too much. Uh, if I feel like I'm getting overpowered or something, I'll generally change something else rather than uh, changing my uh, changing my um, uh, mast base. Well, let's have a look yeah. at the sweet spot then. So at the, the moment, yeah. So the moment on actually on both of my boards it seems to be kind of around the middle of the track so uh, I don't know if that uh, I feel like that's maybe where the where I need to have it due to the fact of the sail being more powerful and pushing down the board uh, like I feel like I don't want to have it too far back because I'm then I'm gonna get out a little bit out of control and too far forward again it, it kind of puts everything down and I'm always trying to fight I have this kind of like, oh, it's on and, and then it's off again kind of thing. So having it in a position that is naturally feeling comfortable and not giving, making me have to fight the gear is what I'm looking for. Yeah, good. Okay, right, downhaul. 
looking down or? So you particularly when you've got a new sail or you've got to a new spot, what are you looking for? How much downhaul do you put on? What's the rules that you work by? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, downhaul, again, like this year, I'm finding that the sails are, are working uh, with, uh, with kind of the same amount of downhaul throughout the range, which is, uh, I mean, I don't want to, you don't want to over downhaul them and you don't want to under downhaul them. So you're kind of looking to find that sweet spot. So how do you that, know what the sweet spot is? That's the question. Uh, well, if you over downhaul, generally then you're, you kind of lose, uh, lose pretty much all the backhand in the sail. So like if you're getting covered by someone, then you've got no fight in the sail. It can feel really fast and free, but but then it also can be a little bit on and off through patches of lighter lighter air and stuff. So I think you got to find like a happy medium between getting nice amount of downhaul, but still feeling kind of balanced in the hands. So if you've got too little downhaul, then the gear feels really powerful and it's maybe not releasing a, a lot. You, so uh, you need to pull a little bit more, but if you pull too much, then you're not going to you're gonna have like this kind of really uh, like a light feel, maybe a light feeling sail, one which is a little bit like uncontrollable, like in the gust, and you feel like you're dipping a rail or something. So, yeah, you want to find like uh, for on each of the size sails, you want to find uh, something that is kind of balanced between like being fast and free, but also still having a bit of juice in the hand. Perfect. And uh, I, you know, I see guys. Some well, some guys seem to keep the boom in the same place. Some people move it around a lot, depending on the sail or the conditions. What do you do? Uh, I think, yeah, it's kind of more, you more, to, more well. to do with the course that I'm sailing actually this year. That I'm kind of find one one boom height, one one thing fits all of the conditions. Because here, for the Ventura, we're generally we're generally sailing like in really powered up conditions. So. I generally have this one set, one setting like the boom, not m amazingly high, but enough so I can just kind of hang off of it and and then get control on the board and kind of fly across the top of the water. If you have too low a boom uh, this year, I'm finding anyway because the sail has a little bit more power in the top of it, then it kind of pulls you forward. And if you've got too low a boom, you're just kind of getting, you kind of burying the nose a little bit. So you've got to have a I gotta have a little bit more of a, a different stance to what I'm, I'm used to. So uh, yeah, it's just like you, you go out and you, you find all these little things. You're doing all the runs. You're using like a, I use a GPS watch and uh, and also test with a, part, a testing partner as well. And then you want to find something you're looking for your good speeds and looking for like uh, what feels comfortable uh, on a broad reach as well as being on a tight reach as well. So yeah, there's lots of little things that you know you need to take into consideration but in general for me this year everything feels pretty comfortable in one kind of setting so i'm probably not adjusting my downhaul i'm not really adjusting my uh, my boom height uh, i'm probably more adjusting outhaul if i need more power and harness line length so well, I'm we'll, shortening let's just move on to let's just go over have a look because combination of uh harness line and uh, the type of harness you use and the height of boom are all relevant, I guess. Uh, so what do you use? Yeah, so uh, at the moment, like here in Fulhaventura, I'm using uh, longer lines than what I have been doing uh, in places like Korea, where uh, where the, the races tend to be a little bit more uh, on courses which are a bit tighter. So I want to have a little bit more of a uh, more, bit more of a longer harness line. Uh, these are 30s to 36s, and they're, they're kind of what I'm I'm using here on all of my sails. So, that in general, I can use a bigger sail, hold it for a bit longer, and uh, absorb some of the power in the in the gusts. And then I can sit on it by having longer harness lines. So these are pretty these are pretty long for yeah. me, really. Yeah. These are the longest ones I've ever sailed on. Do, so. do you shorten them at all for it? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. You know, because obviously, if you get stuck out there and you're on a, a sail that maybe you're missing a bit of power from then what you can do is you can uh, you can shorten up your harness lines and get a bit more power a bit more lift and uh, push on the fin a bit easier so yeah you can adjust that area to get them it feeling nicer and then as well like adjust like letting the outhaul out making the sail more 
football. Yeah, so what's the rule for you with the alcohol? I mean, do you do it during a race? Do you, what, what's the, you're letting it off to give it more barely? What's, how's that work? Yeah, I might let it off before the start and like get, make sure I got a lot of power at the start. And then once I've, once I'm like coming down the course and um, uh, I might adjust it uh, a little bit, but try not to mess around with it because, you know, the race is really short. So better to just kind of like, uh, you know, get a set in, be comfortable with it, even if you are overpowered or uh, or whatever, and then just get yourself around the course and focus on jiving because water conditions here are pretty pretty tricky with a lot of chop at the moment. So you want to focus on where you're going, not on like you're looking at your boom and stuff. The um, there's a lot of talk about the mast being everything and how it affects the sail. What what's your play? What do you do with masts? You have loads of them. Do you just set with a couple? Uh, I keep I keep a few every year, the ones which I really like, and then I might get a couple of uh, new ones, and then see if there's any changes, uh, and uh, yeah, and then just find mess around with uh, finding the best one that works with uh, each of the boards. So what, what's the rule with them? Softer, stiffer? Well, it depends on the year, you know. It depends on the sale, how the sale's been developed. So I, I cannot say there's a hard rule for it, but. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, you when you feel like it's right for you, you, you know, you do you do all your homework and try all these condi- try all these settings and stuff. And then when you've when you've tried everything, you kind of go right, okay, well that felt good to me when I'm sailing in those conditions. So, and I then, guess if you've got a GPS watch these days, you can add a bit of science to it, no? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You use that as a reference and uh, as well as sailing around with other people, you know, because yeah, you want to, yeah. I mean. Yeah, you just go through as many options as possible and uh, hope that you find one which is like going to give you that little bit of extra. And the final bit of tweaky techy, some guys don't bother, some of say that they go into detail, is trying to find those fine details with batten tuning. Would you do any of that? Uh, yeah, I have done. I've definitely uh, played around with battens, taken, making. In my in my experience, it's usually just to kind of settle the sail. So I may, I might just put a stiffer carbon batting in my sails just because where I'm a quite a light guy uh, I need to I need to have that little bit of extra control and uh, I don't want the sail moving around too much so uh, I might put a harder batting in but uh, that's generally all, I, all I've been doing with batting so far I could probably go, I'll go into more more batting tuning if I had more time but at the moment I'm pretty busy <laughs> So there we go, some super interesting tips from Ross Williams there. He has to be one of the most consistent slalom riders in the business. I think we looked in the last 10 years, he's really rarely been outside the top five, let alone, well, maybe even top three. Absolutely crazy stats for Ross. So interesting, get his take uh, on some tuning tips there and some uh, helpful advice, I hope. Uh, Again, lots of other riders we've done in the past. Click around and uh, stay tuned to the channel subscribe